love it. That guy was awesome. So, like we said before, we are excited for our next guest. What an incredible guest with an incredible background. Served in two White House administrations under President Bill Clinton and President Barack Obama serving under Joe Biden recently. So we're going to welcome to the show the one and only Mo Vila. Hey, guys. How are y'all? Good. How are you doing, Mo? I'm doing well. Thank you. I was starting to think I was chopped liver. <laughs> you saved the best for last. Right? No, save the best for last. Exactly. Pavlina saying that Joe Biden did like love millennials. I was like, oh my God, you're breaking my heart. Oh, I'm so sorry, Mo. Am <laughs> I wrong? Awesome. I'm on here to tell you how wrong you are about that, okay? Okay, girl, tell me. <laughs> yes. Tell but me. Yeah, I defer to you to ask me questions. That's not fair for me to take over. Okay, that's show. Fine. No, but we're gonna we're gonna lead off. We'll go to that one second. So I have a question for yes. you. Because it, it kind of throws the whole world for a loop. I'm just one, with you, Pavlina. I don't want you to get mad at me. I know, Mo, we're good. <laughs> Be careful with those millennials. They know how to use social oh, media. I know. That's why I'm apologizing, Eric. I'm not <laughs> stupid. <laughs> All of a sudden, hashtag Mo hates millennials. Oh, it's, it's everywhere. I will get it trending. Okay. Oh, we're going to, it's going trending right I now. Yeah, I promise. You don't have to have any. <laughs> so, so I got to ask you two questions. Mo, recently sure. you were on an inter interview on XM Radio, and yeah. you said you, uh, the question was really ridiculous that you were asked, so I'm not going to bother rehashing that. But Thank you said that. The number, it was ridiculous. Go look it up and you'll be like, I understand why Eric didn't ask it. But you said a certain number of interviews you had done at this time. What number are you on right now? 268. Damn. Okay. In five months. So you're not busy at all. You know what? No. I, here's what I've concluded. First of all, my mama's 87. She still sits on my shoulder and says, don't you dare think that's about you. It's because I have a good publicist. Let's be clear. <laughs> that helps. That definitely that helps. Help. <laughs> so, Mo, so, Mo, let me ask you this. You served in two administrations. So, here's my question. How does a man from Texas, and, and we'll add to that, a gay man from Texas serve as a senior official for two White House and become one of the leading White House insiders? Still to this moment, you are filled with knowledge and insight. How did you get to this point? Mm. Wow. Um, thanks for asking that. Uh, first of all, I, let me, all joking aside, because humor is, frankly, one of the most important traits I believe we all should possess. And honestly, humor is part of it, as I, you saw me open right away with laughter, because I believe laughter is what bonds all humans. You can hate somebody, but when you laugh with them at that millisecond, you actually like each other. Um, so humor has always been a part. But, I'll, uh, you know, on a more serious note, Honestly, um, for the first so many years of my life, growing up on a ranch in South Texas, Catholic, Latino, gay, not being able to be who I was made to be, not gay, not having the privilege of being my authentic self because society wouldn't allow me to back in that time period. Um, and so honestly, a lot of it has to do with ultimately recognizing that each of us as human beings are a gift to the universe. And our uniqueness as individuals uh, is what makes us so amazingly special. Every single person has a story. And every single person is amazingly special. And when you come to realize that and you own that, um, then frankly, you, you know, serving twice in the White House for me is nothing more than an honor and a privilege that, uh, that the universe bestowed on me. But I, it, it doesn't matter about me, Eric. And Pavlina, it really is about the fact that whatever we get to achieve, whatever the universe gives us on this journey, we need to use our positions and our platforms to make the world a better place. Uh, and how do you use uh, these blessings that we receive uh, in the, on this journey called life? So uh, to me, it was about uh, a privilege and it was an honor. I'm eternally grateful for the incredible chances I've been given. I love your humility and your mindset. And it's just, it's incredible. And, but congratulations on all of your success as well, because it's been incredible. Um, I want to go back for a hot second. So 
on Joe Biden and everything, I all I have seen with him are his some of his gaffes and, you know, just like the gaffes <laughs> that make me a little bit concerned about his ability to run this country. Sure. What can you say on that? And like, because, you know, you're you're in this, you know, all of these guys, like, what would you say on that? Well, a few things. And thanks for, for giving me the chance to address that uh, first and foremost. OK. Um, I, I, you know, I say this again from a really humble, privileged place, and that is I know Joe Biden. Obviously, he is a very dear friend of mine. Um, the Biden family are very special to me. Um, and because I feel that I get I get that chance to know him up close and personal, uh, I can tell you that I can attest to his tremendous mental acuity. Um, the second thing I will tell you on this topic of gaffes is uh, I make them every day myself. And I'm uh, 20 years younger than Joe. Um, and I know folks that are uh, 22 that make just as many gaffes. So to me, it's not about what gaffes he makes. That is not a reflection on a person's mental acuity or mental preparedness. Um, it's also a reflection, in my opinion, of our humanity. Um, you can run the country and make a mistake now and there and, and mix up some words. I don't want to take waste time on your incredible podcast because when to talk about Donald Trump and if you're worried about Joe's gaffes now and then but we the thought that we are trying to talk about that when we have a president who tweets yeah. hateful divisive spewing all kinds of horrible things so to me I'm like it's a non-issue I will attest to you, Pavlina, I give you my word that Joe Biden is extremely strong in his mental acuity. He is overwhelmingly prepared to lead this country. Um, the one huge piece that I can't wait to watch again is I just hope that when he's president, I know one thing will happen, and that is the rest of the world will like us again. They will respect us again. They won't be laughing at us. I do TV in Germany, Indonesia, Australia, the UK, I've done them all in the last five months. And every interview, it is brought to my attention that people around the world are so baffled by the fact that we are now represented by a leader who is dividing, who is bullying. So I just don't understand any concern right now about Joe Biden uh, because he's so amazingly prepared to lead this country. So, so I, I totally understand that. And, you know, actually, I travel all over, you know, just for fun. I, I like yeah. to travel a lot and I make a lot of friends in different parts of the, you know, parts of the world. Yeah. And they've said the exact same thing to me. And it's so yeah. hurtful because, like, I love America yeah. and it like it kills me that yeah. I just make fun of it. It really makes me sad, to be honest with you. Like on these interviews lately, I've had to watch it because I don't have a poker face, as you can tell real quickly. Like, you'll know when I'm passionate, you'll know when I'm sad, you'll know when I'm, you know, passionate, excited. Um, so I have to be careful because I'm sitting there and I can actually go like, oh, you know, like, <laughs> it's just breaks my heart sometimes because I'm like, wow, you know, it's so embarrassing, to be honest. Live yeah. on Australian television on Sunday, I actually apologized to the Australian people because I was like, I want to remind you, we are a people of compassion. Right now, that's what's missing, to be honest with you, is that we've lost over 78,000 people. That was somebody's mom, dad, brother, sister, grandfather, co-worker, co-parishioner, colleague, friend. So, so uh, well, let me ask you a question. So we, we, we I 100, 1,000% agree with you when it comes to the president and his immature tweeting like a 13-year-old strung out on Mountain Dew after playing Call of Duty for 36 hours. I don't think anybody could do that. And still, my I, I mean, it's I agree with you again as a veteran, his utter disrespect for an eight-year-held POW and honorable senator are unexcusable. And also skipping out of Vietnam and calling one of the greatest generals of our time, General James Mattis, her, uh, a said that he could be a better general. Come on, we don't give Brad, we don't give special spoons out, and you actually have to get dirty when you serve. So that's not going to happen there. But it's funny how we have this double-sided standard, right? And, and obviously, Joe, Joe is in the news uh, 
with Tara Reid, not the actress, not the American Pie and famous Sharknado actress, but this staffer. And we have President Trump obviously has his career of uh, womenizing and everything that he's done and is far from a patron saint. Why, and this is a this is kind of a devil's advocate question for you because I think in 2020, we need to see a candidate that steps up to be a leader. We have not seen that in 2020, and I hate to say that, and I know I'm gonna piss off some MAGA people, but as someone who understands what leadership means, you and I both do, I served, you served in an administration, so you definitely get it. Why is leadership so not important? And we're just amazed by these old scandals, right? The Me Too movement with this Tara Reid where they're all out and she's 100% correct and Joe can't defend himself, yet this never was brought forward when he was vice president. And Trump gets to go bully everybody and like the media only spins it in his way. How does Joe come back from this, right? We hear his mental health, they make a big deal about this, but this woman, Tara Reid, am I right or wrong? She's represented by an attorney that the Trump administration pays for. I don't know about that, Eric. I don't know who pays for the, her attorney. I do know that the, uh, I just this morning discovered that her attorney I, has some ties to uh, some journalistic ties to Russia of some kind. <laughs> but look, listen, if you will allow me the chance to address this Tara Reid thing real quickly, um, because there really are just about this many, less than this many of us in Joe Biden's career of public service that, by the way, has been incredibly honorable. Uh, and there are just less than this many of us that can say that we actually managed his human resources portfolio. So let me address this Tara Reid thing once and for all. OK, um, I am uh, Paulina, as much as I love millennials as well. I'm also a huge me too movement type of guy. Most gays are, by the way. Most gays have a very tremendous affinity with women uh, for a, a myriad of reasons. We can have a whole other show on that topic. But, but here's what's important here. I'm a Me Too supporter. I believe that every man and every woman, both genders, if they feel maligned or victimized, has the right to speak out. They have the right to express their concerns. They have a right to be heard. And we as a society have a responsibility to listen. Here's where I am different than most democratic strategists in that I don't believe that there is a presumption of truth. I'm a trained attorney. And I will tell you this, in law school, the first thing you learn is you're innocent until you're proven guilty. There is no presumption of truth in the court of law. And I do not believe there should be one in the court of humanity. That's number one. Number two, Miss Reed's story has changed so much that... All I can conclude is that all I have about her stories over these 20 whatever years are suspicions. There are tremendous discrepancies in her stories and there are tremendous inconsistencies in her stories. And number three, for 16 months, the first 16 months of Joe Biden's vice presidency, I was his director of management and administration and I oversaw human resources. I never won iota of a second saw any behavior pattern, no inclination. I never heard as much of, as a whisper or a rumor or innuendo and absolutely no one came to my office and it would have come to my desk had anything like that been occurring. Nada, zero, zilch. Combining those three things, I am absolutely unequivocally confident that Miss Reed has falsely accused the vice president, period. Awesome. So, so, Mo, let me ask you this, and I'm looking into our feed right now. We've got a couple, of course, anytime you talk about election time, uh, you always will get two sides of the house. Uh, and uh, Pavlina and I talked about this when you stepped into the green room. And it's something that in my 44 years of being on this earth, uh, I'll say this. It is very disappointing to go into election year with that's our guy. These are our picks, right? We had this in the previous election with Hillary Clinton, which was very hard as a veteran to vote for her after I know what happened in Benghazi talking to boots on the ground in Benghazi. It was hard to do that. Uh, but also having a reality TV star who, uh, I'm sorry, not sold on that either. Uh, I know the economy is good and that's what you'll get from the right. They will throw that quickly at you. But, you know, one of the questions I see, and I actually love this question, is, you know, why, why does the media make it out that 
Biden deserves forgiveness, but they won't forgive Donald Trump. Right. And again, I think that's a media thing, not a voter thing. But the media does control the way we think. Right. They control which way you want. So how give us the best reason why Joe is our guy with everything going on. Give us that. First of all, Eric, there's no there's nothing to forgive him for. He has absolutely looked in the camera and said this did not happen. And there are about a hundred reasons to believe this did not happen. So I don't know what we're forgiving him for. But let me say this about anybody. That I hope you, I'm sure Pavlina is the same way, I'm the same way. All of us deserve to be judged by the totality of our being. Okay? We've all earned that as a human being, in my humble opinion. And so I don't, there's nothing to forgive Joe about, okay? But I will, let me say this about why I am absolutely excited and confident about Joe Biden. I happen to know him. I worked for him, as you know. And I will tell you this, the loving, compassionate, empathetic man that is relatable, that understands the plight because he lived that plight as a kid who overcame a stutter and still challenged with a stutter. This man is real. He's real when the camera's on. He's real when the camera is off. He's compassionate when it's on and he's compassionate when it's off. He understands global affairs when in a private meeting and he understands it's publicly. He understands that it's about us as united Americans. He also taught me a lesson. Let me share it with you and your viewers. I was on Air Force Two on his first trip internationally with him and Dr. Biden to Chile and Costa Rica. And on that plane, I got a little bit cocky. And I didn't like the fact that some Republican senator at the time didn't was saying ugly things about an Obama policy that we were trying to get through. And I just decided to cuss out the Republican senator in front of the vice president and our staff. And I said that blankety blank blank senator, whoever, right, this Republican senator. And it was Joe Biden who grabbed my forearm and he said, Mo, that's my friend. He's an honorable man. He wants the same greatness for our country. We just differ about how we're going to get there. That is what Joe Biden said to me. That's who Joe Biden is. You're worried about him being a leader? That's what I call a leader. The ability to respect and to love and to unite and to find common ground and to find consensus and to not be divided by these horrible, horrible ways we are being divided now by race by who I love, by who you vote for, by where zip co- what zip code you live in, by whether your parents have an accent or not. These are not what we should be focused on. We should be focused on what Joe Biden is, and that is this man who knows how to bring people together. That's what this country needs. So sorry to get so passionate, but this is very personal to me. I'm tired of waking up in the morning and reading a tweet of hatred and division. Aren't you sick of it? This is an election about decency, Eric. It is that simple. Joe might make a gaffe, Pavlina, but I'd rather have a gaffe with decency and compassion and empathy and leadership than tweets of division and hatred. It's that simple. I, I love I love your passion, Joe. And thank you for Mo. informing me a little Mo. bit more Mo's, about Joe. Ba- Joe's the next president. I'm Mo. <laughs> no, I said Mo. Did I say oh, Joe? I, I meant Mo. Oh, my goodness. I was like, thank you, <laughs> but not in this lifetime, honey. <laughs> <laughs> of course. And, and um, by the way, and- I, can, I can say honey because I'm gay. Uh, Eric cannot do that. Oh, yeah. Oh, you're See, good. There's rules. You're good. There's too I love rules it. around here. I'm, I always break those two. <laughs> <laughs> well, they say totally fine. To be broken. Sorry, I got so passionate, but let me tell you, it's to me, this is, I feel like our country is at a breaking point. When I watched Ahmed Aubrey or whatever, I can't say, I didn't remember his last name, but the gentleman who just got gunned down by those two gentlemen in Georgia. And I watched that video. And I'm not a religious person. But the, those who are Christian always say, there but for the grace of God go I. And I just thought to myself, that could be you 
Pablina as a young woman. Could have been me as a gay man or a Latino, right? Could have been Eric. Could have been any one of us. All rooted in some semblance of hatred. Because maybe he looked or acted or said or whatever, something different. And this, to me, is percolating in our nation. And it is simmering. And it scares the living hell out of me right now. I, I totally, really, I totally get it. I totally see it. Um, so and I, not I, even more. I I mean, time. Let's stop worrying about the gaps and start worrying about saving our, saving humanity, saving our planet. Which I was proud to see the millennial environmentalist yesterday endorse Joe Biden. Oh yes, I saw that. Yeah. I was curious though. I want to know who are your thoughts on his running mate though, because yeah. that's just as important. You know that I want to know what's going on with that. I have breaking news. Ooh, it's gonna be a woman. Okay. Uh, we already know. <laughs> yes, we know <laughs> that part. Breaking. Yes. <laughs> uh, you know what? Here's my answer to that. I get uh, you know I get asked a few times a day. Um, I'm not. Um, I don't speculate on who specifically it might be. What I do focus is on two things. One, that it is going to be a woman. And it's about damn time that we'll have a woman president or vice president. And I am deeply proud of that. Because let me tell you something. As a Latino, the woman plays a very huge role in our family system. Okay? there's It's, it's a, like an outsized role in the Latino culture. Our moms... Our grandmothers, our sisters, uh, some folks, girlfriends, not mine, but, but right, plays this incredible role. And so to me, women deserve a place at every table in the every form of equality possible. So I'm so proud that Joe Biden is going to do that, number one. Number two, I'm very focused on this. My God, are we lucky. We have a bench that goes on for days of fierce, brilliant women from California and Kamala to Amy in Minnesota to Catherine Cortez Masto, Nevada to Gretchen Whitmer, Michigan to Elizabeth Warren in, in Massachusetts to Michelle Obama in Washington, D.C. You never know, right? And on and on and on. It is amazing. So if anybody knows what is needed in the as characteristics and traits in a vice president, it's Joe Biden, wouldn't you think? And so I just trust he's going to make an incredible decision. I have a few friends on the selection committee. I know that Cynthia Hogan, my dear colleague and friend, is going to be a very, very strong vocal voice on that selection committee. I'm so excited. And I, I'm going to be with you when we jump up and down because it's going to be a fierce woman. And I can't wait. I can't wait. So Mo, I have a question for you before we wrap. Yeah, and I just noticed it when you were listing the amazing women that have been elected. Uh, you did leave off Tulsi Gibber, who has been attacked by Hillary Clinton relentlessly. Mind you, Tulsi is a decorated veteran and probably more, you know, I would say leans more independent. She's been on Hannity's show a number of times, but I really love her. And I also noticed we haven't talked about Mayor Pete, who I'm a huge fan of. I love both of those. Probably you'll lean on me because the veteran in me. But to me, out of everyone we've talked about, and personally, to me, we don't have two candidates that fit what I like. I want somebody, if we're going to send our men and women, our brave men and women off to protect our country, right now we have neither person, I think, understands the commitment because they haven't served. We're our presidents, and I'll give Obama an exception to this because he actually entered the military. I know some people will attack him for not saluting with a Starbucks cup in his hand, but that was old news, and that happens time and time again. Remember, you can go see everybody else with their fishy salutes. Nobody does it right unless you are, unfortunately, one of our late presidents, like President Bush, who actually served his country. So my question to you is this. Is there a reason why you left off the, you know, left off Tulsi, who I think is a, was a fabulous candidate, shut down and quieted by these loudmouths who have no idea what foreign policy truly is, and you know, kind of respond to me why Tulsi is 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 Tulsi even a consideration? Because to me, she's the backbone. It, it, the ones that I'm hearing being rumored, I'm sorry, Camilla Harris. I, I don't need to have my 12th grade biology teacher who's going to tell me I missed the question but doesn't give me the answer why. That doesn't excite me. So <laughs> I love that. You know, I, I I admire all of them, right, including Tulsi. Uh, 
but my God, I'm tired of being lectured to. So I, I really appreciate that comment. You know, I think they all need to like lecture a little less, maybe and listen a little more, but maybe that goes for me too. I don't know. But um, look, I don't dislike Tulsi Gabbard. Let me let me start by saying this. I'm I'm um, the son of a, an army veteran who fought for our nation in the Korean War. I've lost my father two years ago, and I thank you. I, I hate to say it anymore because one time I did a veterans roundtable, and I was like a keynote speaker with an amazing group of veterans down in Florida. And one of the things that came out behind the closed doors when it was a heart-to-heart -heart discussion was that they feel it's so patronizing for us to say to you guys, thank you for your service, right? But when it comes from the heart, I, I keep saying it because I'm like, I'd rather take the risk than not say anything at all. So thank you, seriously. Uh, I had the privilege of managing some of our military folks in the White House this last time as the director of management for Joe Biden. Uh, and they are my brothers and sisters to this minute. Um, and so I'm very proud of that. And I was proud of their service. Um, look, I think that I personally uh, admire Tulsi Gabbard for her service to our country. I admire her for service to the people of Hawaii. Uh, I don't find Tulsi Gabbard, putting aside my admiration for her as a veteran, um, I just don't find her a uniter. She's a little bit too much of a divider rather than a uniter. And as you can hear from my passion, I'm all about love and bringing people together, Right. You, I think you might have seen me on Liquid Lunch the other day. That that tends to be a little more of a conservative show. I do Fox and I'm on Fox and Friends tomorrow morning at 6:20 a.m. If you want to watch live, I've done Fox Business many times. I do Newsmax all the time. Um, so the reason I do all those shows is because my theory is I think we have more in common than we do different. And when we are different, we should be celebrating those. But I'm not sure Tulsi's 100% in that kind of unifying spirit. So that's my concern with Tulsi. Is she on the list? I have no idea. Okay. Uh, I hope she is. She should be considered. Um, and so uh, that's my thing on Tulsi. Um, I, I, you know, all I can say to end this time together is, um, yes, you're right. These are two candidates, neither who have served. But I will point something out to you, Eric and Pavlina. Um, I would argue that I've never seen in the eight years of the Obama-Biden administration, I've never seen two, a first lady and a second lady in Jill Biden and Michelle Obama do more with military families than those two ladies did for eight years. Nobody, nobody can deny that. They want to argue with me and debate me on it. I will kick their ass because it is a fact. It's a fact. And to end this, let me tell you how much I love and admire George H.W. Bush. I think that that era of Republicans are people that I would love to call my friends. I have many friends that are Republicans from that traditional Republican Party that we knew we both loved this country. And we all knew that we wanted the best for her and her people. We just might have differed about how to get there, right? Right? But we all had a common love and patriotism for this incredible nation and this democracy. And so I miss the George H.W. Bushes. I miss the John McCains. Uh, those were that the people that Joe Biden grabbed my forearm and said, that's my friend. And that is a lesson I take with me every day that Joe taught me. And I hope that all your listeners take that lesson as well. Let's stop for a second, right? Let's stop for a second and let's try our best to find common ground and have mutual, mutually respectful dialogue and discourse. Because otherwise we're going to remain so polarized and you're going to keep seeing these shootings that we just saw because people have are convinced, you guys, they're convinced that if you're different than me, somehow that makes you something I should be fearful of. And it's the opposite. I want to know more about Pavlina. I'm looking at her right now. She's beautiful. You can tell she's smart as hell. I, I, I'm, I'm being serious. I want to know her story. There's something about her story I promise you I can learn from that can help me be a better person. Same with you, Eric. I want to hear about your service. 
I want to hear, you know, I, I, I think you, uh, Butch might have mentioned to me, were you in the, did you have a football career? No, I wish I did, but no. Okay. There's not much call for a six foot white guy from Folsom, California. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, try me to five eleven and chubby gay guy from South Texas. Okay, you know what? Well, <laughs> who has it worse, brother? Who has it worse? Oh, uh, yes. But anyway, you guys are awesome. I, I wish you continued success on your podcast. I'm actually launching a podcast in two weeks. And I want you both to be on together. You'll be the only time I'm going to. I love that. Yes. You'll be the only time I'm going to have two people. Swear, swear to God. All of my format is one guest only for the whole 30 minutes. I'm going to have you all on together because I want to tell. I want you. I want. I don't want you to tell me before either. I want to hear your story with my viewers. Okay. Will you do that? That would be so fun. You I got it. That. Absolutely. Are you in it? Only if you come back. Only if you come back to oh, me and have another political. Oh my God. Anytime. I, I mean it. Anytime. Especially Fridays. Awesome. I love it. <laughs> what a way to go into the weekend. Well, we, we want to thank day. you for coming on today, bud. It has been, trust me, enlightening for your conversation. The conversations in the DMs are even more interesting. Uh, further proving how our country uh, is very divided still. I do want to jump on before we close out. That President uh, George W. Bush did release his tweet a week ago tomorrow that talked about we need to be more unified. So I absolutely love that. That is one of my favorite presidents. Reagan is always going to be my number one. Uh, but this is why we have folks like Mo on to the point so we can get to the truth. We list many other media outlets that will sugarcoat it. They have sponsors and they have lobbyists that push their agendas. We're going to get you to the bottom line of the truth. And it might be uncomfortable, but you put your big pants on and buckle up and we're going to deal with it because we're Americans. And at the end of the day, DC is always going to have their sex scandals and pointing fingers at each other. It's just more because we have social media and news media to tell us how it is. But I can tell you from serving in the military, trust me, just stick to your guns and listen to folks who are going to tell you the story. And you may be uncomfortable. Sometimes you might learn something from uncomfort. So Mo, I want to thank you for joining us today. Joining Kathleen and I, we had a great time with you, my friend. Thank, thank you so much. You guys have a beautiful day. Stay healthy above all. Thank you.